welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear. And I am a reader and a writer. And I'm very excited to be here today to go over my favorite 2021 reads. This was a pretty hard list to put together because I have had some great reads this year. Now, one thing to note, these are books that I read in the year 2021. Not all of them were published in the year 2021. I just want that to be a clear distinction right now. Also, in my top 10, I have only chosen one book per author. And I say that because in my original accounting, I had two books by the same author in the same series. And I was like, you know what? That's not fair. So I stuck with the one that I had a higher rating for as my top 10 and then moved another one up into the top 10. Now, getting into my top 10. Coming in at number 10, I have An Ancient Peace by Tanya Huff. Yes, I know that this is not an ancient piece. This is the next one in the series. This is what I had. So this is what I'm putting up. An ancient piece is the first in the Peace Ca in the Peacekeeper trilogy, number six in the Confederation. This is where you get to first see Torin and her strike team operating in the wardens. And I thought it was a fun concept of going to one of the elder races homeworlds, which is been abandoned because they had created weapons and instead of destroying them they buried them and then the coordinates were not supposed to be shared with anybody but somebody has figured it out and they're trying to go grave rob so the strike team has to go stop it. Coming in at number nine I have Shadow Presence by Caroline Yoakum and this was actually three novelettes but combined they made a bigger wider arc of a story and I really enjoyed the full arc. I don't think I would have liked each piece by itself if that's all I had read, but together they make a complete interesting story. And it's about a world that very much believes in body modification, or not in the way meant, not the body itself being modi modified, but the image you present is modified. So, if I want to have pink hair, I don't actually have to dye my hair pink. I just put a overlay over and that's what you see. In this world, instead of having prisons, they decide to force an overlay that makes people shadowed. And then the people who are shadowed can't interact very well with other people. They can with their direct family members from what I read but even that seems to be a little bit hard. It, this is very much like a utopian turned dystopian, basically. And the main character of this, uh, her daughter is protesting this decision and she goes to pull her daughter out of the protest, but by doing so, finds out that a coworker thought something she had done was shady and reported her and now she gets shadowed. And it's her experience of living in this shadowed world where she can't very well communicate with other people. Coming in at number eight, I have Blue Period Volume 1 by Tsubasa Yamaguchi. And this is an interesting manga because it's set in high school and it's about a young man who's trying to figure out what he is going to do with his life. He's just kind of drifting along. He's a good enough fellow, people get along with him, but he doesn't have really any driving motivation for himself. And then through a classmate and his art class, he gets interested in art and finds something that he desires to work for. I also really enjoyed this story because yes, they ha he has his delinquent friends who are into sports and just kind of doing normal teenage stuff. However, they are fully fleshed characters and the author gives you the opportunity to see that, okay, just because this guy likes sports doesn't mean that he doesn't like doing other things as well. And so you get to actually see everyone as full characters, full people, instead of 
here you are one note to fit what I need for the story. So that was, that really elevated this manga for me. Coming in at number seven is a children's book. And that book is Something Happened in Our Town by Marianne Solano, Marietta Collins, and Anne Hazard. And this book is written to help children understand police violence and help parents to talk about this topic with children. In fact, it follows two children, one a white girl and one a black boy, as they talk to their families about a man who has been killed by the police in their town. And it goes to show that just because someone is young doesn't mean they're not picking up on, hey, something has happened. And at the end of the book, it gives more resources of how to talk of how to have this conversation with children. And no way did this book say that the police overall are horrible or bad. It What it really focuses on is we need to love our fellow brothers and sisters here on earth. We need to be nice to them and stand up for them. It's about unity. Let's be one as a human race. But since we're not, how do we talk about it with our children to help the next generation be better than our generation is? So coming in at number five is Blackwater Sister by Zen Cho. This is what I would call a contemporary magical realism because it depends on what your culture is and your religious beliefs. This is about a woman named Jess who is moving back to Malaysia with her parents. She's grown up in the States since she was a small child, gone to college, and has not been able to find a job. And her dad, after ha having had cancer, the pa her parents decide to go back to Malaysia, and so she goes with them. She is also struggling with how to tell her parents that she is gay. And this is something that just is. There's not a whole lot of her being other than who she is. She's also has a girlfriend that she has sort of broken up with, and her girlfriend just really wants her to tell her parents about them. This is kind of the background of what's going on. As she's thinking about these things, a voice starts talking to her, and it's supposedly her dead grandmother, her dead maternal grandmother, who she does not know or does not remember. And her maternal grandmother has a task for her. She wants her to take revenge in behalf of her goddess. This is a really interesting book and I really liked the contemporary setting and getting to see another culture through their eyes. Sorry, that was number six. Number five is Call of the Bone Ships. Again, not that book, but the next one in the series and it's what I have with me. And that's by R.J. Barker. Since it is number two in the series, I can't say a whole lot about it either, but it's continuing on the journey with Joran Twiner as he is on a black ship. A black ship is a ship of prisoners. People have lost their rights and this is basically their death sentence to sail the, sh to sail the seas on these black ships working for the fleet until they die. Sea dragons have now come into the world again their best and finest ships, which are dwindling, were built out of the bones of these creatures. And Joran is found in a plot with Maeus, his shipwife captain, to protect the wake worm, as they call it, instead of allowing people to kill it and take its bones and prolong the war that is currently happening. This series I'm having so much fun with, and I'm so excited to finally read the third book in the trilogy. And uh, number four is Loathe at First Sight by Suzanne Park. This is one of my few digital reads. And this was originally marketed as a romance, but this is actually contemporary with a romance subplot. This is about a woman named Melody, who is a video game producer and working her way through that environment. She's also Asian and dealing with not only racism, but sexism, and the whole thing is getting blown wide open. She gets the opportunity to produce a female 
focused game and not everyone's happy about it and so think of a lighter version of Gamergate begins to happen to her and her family and she's still just working through it and it was just uh, it was a very interesting like peel back look at the industry and how it is and it, it does clearly point out that not every male in the video game industry is racist or sexist but that culture and what it allow and what it has allowed ha to happen and this book has a great friends group coming in at number three is my grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry by frederick bachman i do own it but i've loaned it out to a co-worker so i don't have it with me so we'll have to just do with the photo this is my second Bachman book that I have read, and I actually ended up getting a copy of it because my mom accidentally ordered herself two. That was exciting for me. <laughs> and in this book, we follow Elsa, who is seven years old. Her best friend in the world is her grandmother, and her grandmother has died. And her grandmother has left her a quest to deliver letters to different people. And sh these letters are just going to come to her she doesn't she didn't get them all at the same time and in doing so in some of these letters she has to face her fe her different fears and then she's getting to know better the people that live in her building and that they're not all who she thought they were this is a great book about childhood and seeing the world through the eyes of a child even when it's dark topics elsa and her grandmother have a make-believe world right. that they have told stories back and forth in and it seems that some of the stories that her grandmother told her are actually true coming in at number two is ancillary mercy this is the first book in the series this is the only one i own currently mercy is the third book and it's the ending of the series this book follows breck who is an ancillary of a justice ship uh, the justice class ship is huge has lots of people on it and ancillaries are captured human beings who have basically had their personalities blanked and then put had connections for the ship's ai to use the bodies yeah there, there's a lot of uh, questionable behavior happening in this empire and the Justice of Torn, which is the justice ship at the beginning of the book is blown up and Breck is one of those and or is the only ancillary to survive and she now wants revenge because she knows who blew her up and it happens to be the Emperor so this is a fun series of her going through and basically tearing down the system so if you like science fiction where people are getting revenge this is definitely a series for you and then coming in at number one the best read i had in 2021 was the hero's journey by gail Carriger. this is actually a non-fiction book and it's highlights how there are two main story archetypes and what a lot of us know is the hero's journey which is Think of Star Wars. <laughs> think of Star. Think of a lot of your big stories where the hero has to go at it alone, has to train, had, probably has a mentor who ends up dying, and in the end, after defeating everyone, everyone's grateful, and then they go off on their own. That's the hero's journey. The heroine's journey is different, <laughs> and it is also something we see a lot in media, but. It isn't as lauded, shall we say. Uh, critics are more critical of it. And something that Carragher goes over is in the hero's journey and heroine's journey, the hero doesn't have to be male. The heroine doesn't have to be female. It's just the terms that they've used because in the ancient myths, that's what it tended to be. But it doesn't have to be. She uses the example of Harry Potter being actually a heroine's journey. 
And that's because you have a character who their world is shaken upside down and in order, or as they are building back up, they get a found family. So everyone who likes found family books, you probably are reading heroin journey books. Just saying. And it goes through how the heroine will delegate authority and they don't win alone. They win as a group. So your ensembles, found families, all that sort of books, those are the heroine's journeys. And I really liked how Carragher used popular media to show how this is happening and why in story, like why with certain story structure or certain story beats, you can expect to have a hero's journey or a heroine's journey and how people feel when that's subverted or changed. Like you can't start off with a hero story and end with a heroine story. People are not, they're all going to be like, mm, this doesn't feel right. You know, so it's more of a, this is the chassis of how stories are, how the stories work. Honestly, Carragher has a great voice as she's going through all of this. The chapters aren't short, so if you, even if you don't normally read nonfiction, I would suggest this book if you like to read, if you like to play video games, if you like to watch TV or movies, because it breaks down the essentials of a story. And it was beautiful. And so it was my favorite book of 2021. So what were a few of your bo favorite books of 2021? I'd love to know. Thank you and have a great day.